Hey guys, glad you can join another Confusion episode. Today it's Dark Saber. Now you might have seen the bonus episode that I've released recently where I showed how I textured the lightsaber's body inside of 3D code. Now I thought I'm gonna start off this episode by actually showing you how to export those textures out of 3D code. So let's dive right into it. So once you're done with your texturing, you want to activate all the layers that represent the final result. Basically, what you see is what you get. So to export, go to File, Export Objects and Textures. We want to export the geometry as I've changed the UVs. I chose the path here and I also chose Roughness Metalness inside the Texture Export Import Workflow dropdown. This is because I'm going to use the Cook Torrents material inside of Fusion and that material uses the Roughness Workflow. For the extensions, I chose EXR. You can choose whatever you like. Just be aware that EXR will be exported as 32-bit float and you might find the file size too big so you can choose something else. Then we have the export presets. Now you don't need to waste your time looking for Fusion inside of here. You won't find it. Yeah, Fusion is not popular yet but we're gonna change that pretty soon. <clears throat> Yeah, so don't worry, it doesn't matter. We just need to check all the maps that we need here. So from the top, we export the color, the roughness, the metalness. We don't need to store the gloss roughness into the metal alpha. We export the tangent normal map. We export the ambient occlusion and the curvature. Now it's very important. If you want to export those two maps here, you want to make sure that those layers here are activated. So don't collapse your layers here. Otherwise 3D code will export you empty maps here. So once you're done, you click OK. I won't do that because it would take a lot of time. Yeah, because these are all 4K maps, so there would be enough time to make me an espresso. Yeah. Okay, so, but you can do that and I would click cancel and I'm going to swing over to Fusion. I'll see you there and we're going to start assembling this thing. Okay, so let's get the lightsaber imported. We choose import FBX scene and you can already see here saber new UV blah 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 blah. Yeah, naming conventions. I was a little lazy. Don't matter. Import it and hit OK. Okay, so that was rather quick. Now, if I view this, you can see that Fusion already assigned the diffuse texture here. And since we are going to create our own materials, we're going to get rid of the default materials. We can just get rid of everything here. Next, I'm going to import all our maps and get rid of the merge. Okay, what we got here, this is the ambient occlusion. This is the color. This is the diffuse. Let me show it to you. Then we have the curvature. We have the metalness and we have the normal map and the roughness. Okay, those are the essential maps that we need. And what we do now is first we activate the shading here. We drop in a cooked tones material, drop in a replace material as well. Then you hook the lightsaber into the replace material and you hook the cooked torrents into the replace material. Now, I'm not going to use the diffuse map for now because I want to focus on the specularity of the lightsaber. So what I do now is I take care of my bump first. So after the bump, add a bump node and you switch it to bump map. And I want to show you something now. Now, if I hook this into the Cook Torrens bump material slot, you can see that actually this is not correct. You might not know, but I know because I textured this thing. So this bumps here should actually go inward. Now I haven't found the right export settings for the normal maps in 3D code, but I found another workaround that is actually super simple to avoid all these try and error. And what you can do is you can add a replace normal node, hook this in between here. And what you do now is you, you flip the U and the V tangents and you have to choose recompute always. And now it's properly aligned and it looks actually quite good. Okay, great. So let's take care of the specularity. As I said before, we need to shift this information into the alpha channel. For that, we use a Boolean tool and we set R to alpha. This basically means that we shift the red channel into the alpha channel. Now, some people ask me why I shift the red into the alpha channel and not the lightness. 
Now the reason for that is simply because it's at the top and it doesn't really make any difference. You can see nothing changes here because the red channel has basically the same values as the lightness. This is because it's a grayscale map anyway. So then I copy this boolean and I paste it after the metal map. And we got the same here. Everything shifted into the alpha channel. So if I activate alpha, you can see we get the same values. Okay, so let's finish our material here. Now in order to judge our metalness here, our shininess, we need a light. So drop in a point light. By releasing the pipe over this red square here, Fusion will automatically create a merged 3D node. View it and now I'm going to take the light and I'm going to move it over so that we get some interesting highlights here. I'm going to copy this light and paste it in again. This time I'm going to move it over and I'm going to move it far back, sort of like a backlight. This will be a red light. I will take care of that later as well. So now this looks very flat. We need some specularity here. So what I do now is I hook the roughness map into the Cook Torrens roughness material slot. Not much changed and I hooked this metalness map into the specular intensity. Now that won't change so much. Now let's go into the Cook Torrens material and open the specular drop down. We're gonna uncheck this do Fresnel and you can see already that the specularity becomes much uh, stronger and now we can play around with the roughness and specularity slider here. And no matter how we tweak this, it just doesn't seem to look like metal. Allow me to demonstrate using 3D code. Now this is a very flat shader we have here, a default shader if you like. And in order to make this look like metal, we're gonna change a few properties over here. First, you need to understand a little bit about the metal properties. Now metal is very reflective. If you have chrome, for example, nope. Not this one. That's what happens in this world. Words are just not what they used to be. If you have chrome, for example, it is close to 100% reflectance. If you take the very light aluminium, however, the reflections are weaker and very blurry. So first, let's increase the reflections by decreasing the roughness of the surface. Okay, this looks like plastic. Now, basic shading theory. The smoother a surface, the more light will be able to bounce to your eyes without being distorted and therefore the higher and sharper the reflectance. A bumpy surface however would spread or scatter the incoming light rays and therefore not only less light will be sent to your eyes but since the rays are scattered into different directions or angles it will create a blurred image when reaching your eyes. So what we do with this plastic here? The reason why it still doesn't look like metal is because metal has a very low diffuse property. Its appearance consists mostly of reflections. So we need to get rid of the diffuse. In order to achieve that, the PBR shaders have something called metalness. And if I increase this, you will see that it starts to become metal. The problem we have in Fusion is that we don't have this metalness property in our material. In order to compensate that, we have to reduce the diffuse color in our fusion material. Now I can demonstrate to you here, for example, if I would reduce the metalness again. And now, instead of increasing the metalness, I bring down the diffuse property. And you can see, although it's not quite the same as the metalness, it still gets much closer to metal. So that's what we're going to do in fusion with the Cook Torrance material. Something like this, for example. We're gonna apply our diffuse map later anyway. I just wanna set the basic look of the specularity. You can see here, it's very nice. Something like this. Let's check high quality and turn off the auto proxy. And I move the light a little bit forward. Okay, it's looking pretty good. And now I want to show you the good old trick that I always do with my bump maps. So this is the normal map. I'm going to add a blur node and I'm going to hook in our normal map into the blur. And then I will merge this back on top of our normal version. Something like this. Very important, you need to actually set the apply mode to overlay with normal maps and bang, our details come back. Now watch closely. This is before the overlay and this is after. You can see that the details 
come out much nicer. Before, after. Before, after. Now, before I hook in our diffuse map, I want to actually set our workspace to linear workspace. For that, I choose the LUT here and I'm going to choose the gamut view and then edit. And I set the output space to sRGB. So you can see the image gets brighter. And then we add a gamut node right after the texture. And here I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to put the source space to sRGB so it gets dark again. Hey, great. So now I'm going to hook this map into the Cook Torrents Diffuse Color Material. And now that we assigned a map, we need to bring the color back to white. And I'm going to add a brightness contrast here, which I use to control the brightness of this map. Again, the darker the diffuse map, the better the shininess, the glossiness pops out. You can see it already looks pretty good. Okay, but we want to bring this further. We want to add reflections. So drop in a reflect material, drop in a sphere map node, and then I'm going to load a map. I'm going to load this factory catwalk environment, which is a blurred HDR map. I'm going to hook this into the sphere map to put it onto environment coordinates. And this one I hook into the reflect color material. And now very important, what I do now is I hook the cook torrents into the reflect background material. And that will be used to replace the material. So let me clean this up a little bit. Then we want to also use the bump map into the reflect material. And we also want to use the roughness into the reflection intensity slot of the reflect material. Now it won't have much effect, but let's just do it. So this is basically our material and what we do with the ambient occlusion and with the cavity, well, it won't have much effect in this case, but we could use the ambient occlusion to occlude reflections inside this map. So we could basically multiply this over this one here and maybe the cavity map to add more brightness to the edges. But we can also take advantage of Fusion's ambient occlusion to create those maps. And I guess they will be a little bit cleaner. So for now, let's leave them up here. So I'm going to set a decent angle here. And what I do then is I drag the camera shortcut into the viewport. And Fusion will create a camera for me. That's pretty cool. Okay, now important is that Fusion will create the camera from the node that is actually in the viewport. So I actually want the lights to be before that. And next I'm going to drop in a renderer. This one will be set to OpenGL and in the output channels I activate the super sampling. For the super sampling rate I lower this to 5 and I'm going to choose a triangle filter. This gives you the most natural filtering. Of course I activate the lighting and the shadows. The shadows will not be generated with point lights but uh, I might use a spotlight later so let's turn it on for now. Also texturing. Use float 16 and in the image tab we set the render to float 16 as well and let's see what we get okay now this is not quite good but we can bring this further so the first thing i do is i go to our diffuse map and i'm gonna lower the brightness like this and then i want to replace our lights this one here let me see if I can find something a little bit more interesting. And this one as well. And another very important thing is with the reflections. I'm going to crank up the reflections here. Let's say something like this. And the glazing strength, we crank up a little bit more. Now with the reflections, it's always very important to play around with the rotation inside the sphere map tool to find a nice reflection you see for example now here at the bottom the reflection is very nice also it's nice to have horizontal reflection lines here here you know i can move it up it depends what you want it's all about what you like and it doesn't matter what other people think in the first place it's about what you want because if you create something with, uh, with other people in the back of your head, you will never be able to actually express yourself. 
Because after all, what you're doing is, is all about expressing yourself. But how can you express yourself if you're always concerned with what people think about your work? If you do what you love and you express yourself honestly, it can't be wrong. Now, we gotta make a big decision here. For example, do we like this reflection down here or do we like the reflection that lies over this grip now that is a little bit diagonal that looks very nice actually but then the reflections disappear here now in order to compensate that we could now that's a little bit uh, that needs a another episode maybe we could actually modify our our hdr map and i'm gonna try it but now i can't promise that it will work this is totally improvised now so first, let's see, the resolution of this map is 512 by 256. I'm gonna bring in a background and I'm gonna put the color white onto it. I'm gonna set it to the same resolution here, 512 by 256. And I'm gonna put it to float 32. And now I'm gonna merge them together. I bring in a mask, a rectangle mask, and I'm gonna hook this into the background tool and I wanna create an extra light in here and I want to have a light on these horizontal objects now the thing is we need to find actually where this is on our map and that can be a little bit time-consuming there was something maybe we have to make this bigger here is something <laughs> it's really hard to get it right it must be somewhere I uh, hear something Oh, here we are. Ah, you see, that's how you can actually extend and modify your HDR map. Additionally, you can blur this. And let's see how it looks with and without. Yeah, well, as I expected, now we have um, reflections also here. That would need further tweaking, but it works. I mean, it just needs more tweaking. You could also create two separate renders of two different reflections and then combine them later. Okay, I'm going to leave this for now and we, we can take care of this later as well. And what I'm going to do now is I'm actually bringing in the ambient occlusion and I have to actually deactivate the OpenCL for some reason. My graphic card doesn't support it. I hook in the render and we also need to hook in the camera for this to work. I'm going to display this. I reduce the samples to get a little bit more speed. And yeah, of course we need to activate the normal and the Z. And now this is a little tricky. Now the ambient occlusion will not be having nice clean edges here. And there are a few th reasons for that. And there's also a workaround for that. For now we leave it like this. I'm going to take care of this later. So let's say this is our ambient occlusion. You can see it looks much cleaner than in 3D code. Just quick and dirty. We're just going to put this on top <laughs> of our render. And we're gonna multiply this. Okay, so with and without. If I zoom in, you can see better. Now, it would be probably a better idea to use a mask in here. And then we derive the mask from the red again. And with that, we're gonna drive a brightness contrast instead. And now we have perfect control. We can adjust the strength of the ambient occlusion in a much more comf comfortable way. And we bring down the brightness. We need to invert the mask. And again, and see, we can darken the cavities. And that is not bad. Now what you can do additionally is create another ambient occlusion. And this time I'm gonna set the kernel type to sphere. And this will give me more something like a cavity map, something like this. And again, I'm using a mask set the channel to red and then i'm going to crank this up here keep in mind that the ambient occlusion is screen space and you will see the polygons actually here so this ambient occlusion node works best with a very high dense object but let's see what we get here again i'm going to copy this brightness contrast and i will hook this mask into it now this time i don't want to darken it but i want to actually see what happens if I brighten this up? Let me see what I can do here. Maybe something like this. Now with the brightness contrast, of course, if you have like very dark areas, the gain will not affect it so much. 
In this case, what you can do is just touch the, the lift a little bit to lift the blacks. And look at this part here. It looks very, very nice. This is like the render itself. And this is how the whole thing looks like with the ambient occlusion combination. This is very beautiful. Again, pure render and simple with ambient occlusion. This is much more defined. You see here, this looks nasty. With ambient occlusion, pff, it's like a miracle. Again, yeah, very nice. So after that, I'm gonna quickly drop in a soft glow and I will reduce this very, very much because I think that too many people overuse this too much. I want to have something like this here. Not too much. Not too much. Ever so slightly. Right here, it's a little, yeah. Here, the highlights are too strong, so it will get a little stronger. You can hit Control to fine tune, but it's okay. And another post effect, if I can call it, that I like to use is the X Chroma tool of the good fella Stefan Eringer. And this needs to be very carefully, otherwise you will get brainwashed. And this is actually a very important effect. And used very subtle, it can actually enhance your image quality. It makes it look more natural. Of course, it, uh, if you use it too much, it will blur the image quite a bit. And what I want to do now is I want to actually apply a lookup table. Now, the lookup table... I want to make a video on that. A lookup table can be used for many purposes. The, what I use now is basically is for a creative reason. You see what a lookup table does. It basically sort of grades your picture. Now, it's not really grading. But again, I'm going to cover this in another episode. Now, with the lookup table, you can quickly create certain looks. And what I like to do here is to just choose another preset and then just load a different lookup table and then see how this actually looks. This is a little bit too one-sided. Okay, now if, if I look at this image, it has too many blacks in there. That is because we don't have GI. In order to balance that out, we can use the ambient light. I'm going to hook this in and then we, we need to reduce the strength because this thing will make your image sort of like self-illuminated. Yeah, you can see here. But it might be important to turn off or to view it without the lookup table to see the actual colors. That is looking pretty nice. Look at this. You can reduce the strength maybe. Although it looks really nice already. And the other thing we can take care of uh, is the specularity and the reflections. They could be improved at the moment. It seems a little bit strong, everything. Now let's see how we could improve that. And I'm going to try to just this light here more to the back. And actually, what if we move it a little bit down and a little bit forward? And now the light goes over the whole lightsaber. This is because the light fall off is set to no decay. And this is actually not realistic. If you want a realistic fall off, you have to choose quadric and then the light becomes almost uh, almost disappear because the decay rate is too high and the strength needs to be much stronger once you use the realistic fall off see now it, it's basically down here yeah now we have oh, have the light only affecting the bottom part here now, we get a nice reflection here, but we lose the nice edge of the scratch. So here as well, we need to make a big decision. For example, we could just reduce, we could just make this a different light source and then copy this light and move this up and over here. And now I'm going to try to get that scratch here back. And you can already see we get it back here. Maybe we make it a little darker. And actually, it's pretty nice. You can see here this red um, pops 
this little detail here pops nicely. Okay, and I'm going to the red light and I make this more red to get more variation in here. Get a little bit more interesting light, yes, and this looks quite nice. Now here we could also try um, what will happen if we move it further down or even up. Hmm. I kind of like this. I will try another light, another copy of the red one. And this time I'm going to move it forward. And I know that we have, we will have the lights, the light blades later. And it could be that they're actually, that they're actually casting light on this body. So I'm going to copy this light one more and I'm going to move this over so that we have the same effect over there. This is starting to get very interesting now because we're giving this thing a meaning, you know, and we don't, we don't place lights just um, randomly. It, it really tells. So here again, um, we're going to choose a different fall off, the linear fall off or the, the quadric fall off, perhaps. I'm not sure yet. Crank this up to 500 and I'm going to reduce because I don't want too much light on this area here. So I'm going to reduce the decay and I'm going to increase the intensity. And I'm going to do the same with the light over here. Set it to quadric and I'm going to put this down. So these are the red lights over here. What about this light? This is the side light. I'm going to do the same here. I reduce the decay rate and I'm going to crank this up like this and now I want to actually fix the HDR map color wise because it doesn't match the red light of the lights and of the coming lightsaber blades so what I want to do is I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna reduce the green I'm gonna reduce the blue okay here we have this yellow orange and that is what shows here we will need to fix this somehow otherwise we get this purplish look Okay, I don't like the placement of the HDR, so I'm going to see if I find something better here. And what happens to this little guy? Kind of meaningless light here. Now we have to replace it somewhere. Oh, and uh, of course, this light, we can make this much stronger by going into the background tool. And then we just crank this up to a much higher value, for example, two. And now this thing will pop much more or even five. And now let's see if we find a better spot for this guy. I kind of like this reflection up here. I wish it would show on here as well. Soften this a little bit more. It almost looks like uh, like a light source. Oh, look at this. Now we get a real nice rim light here. Now it emphasizes this round part here. Now these parts look pretty nice. Now you see it's a lot of balancing this thing and um, we can try a lot here. And now let's see how it looks again with the ambient occlusion. And let's see how our different LUT crunch. Well, okay guys, you get a picture. You see already that this can take quite some time to get some very good uh, values. And it's all about the values. The setup is good. The setup you see here is, is really good. Now it's all about setting the reflections right, aligning it right, getting the, the specularity right, getting the bump right, the light positions. It's all about you now. Now you can go in and express yourself. Hey. Now this is not a GI renderer, you have to understand that. People think that Fusion is uh, so awesome. I mean, it's awesome, but it's not a renderer. It's a compositing software. And for a compositing software, what you can do with this outdated, let me say outdated renderer is amazing. Okay, it's simply amazing. So you have to understand that. You need to find the right values. You, you need to get the understanding of what it takes to get the good result. It's not the renderer that does it for you, you have to do it. But I think now you know how to export textures from 3D code, bring it into Fusion and how to build your little setup where you can go very creative. So my name is Vito, I'll see you soon. Until then, yeah, you know.
enjoy what you're doing. Yay! And by the way, if you like my stuff, please support me because this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. And I want Fusion to become a champion again. But for that, I need you guys. For that, we need to we need to be together. We need to create this awesome community that was never there before for Fusion. Anyway, anyway, thank you very much and see you soon. In the next episode, I'm going to show you how you can completely change the appearance of the lightsaber's body by just changing a few values and a few lights. The setup will stay the same. You just change a few values, reposition some lights and uh, alter the HDR. Well, I hope you tune in when it's time for Dark Saber. Yeah.